I need Trevor Lawrence. I'm going to have to go to the lab to do this. You can literally find thousands of articles, images, theories, etc. about the Magnus Effect on the Internet. Um, this is uh, something I took from Wikipedia. Just a general description where the Magnus effect is an observable phenomenon that is commonly associated with a spinning object moving through a fluid. The path of the spinning object is deflected in a manner that is not present when the object is not spinning. The deflection can be explained by the difference in pressure of the fluid on opposite sides of the spinning object. The Magnus effect is dependent on the speed of rotation. The Magnus effect is named after Heinrich Gustav Magnus, the German physicist who investigated it. There is also some uh, information that Isaac Newton may have also described this even earlier. Now, the Magnus effect is dependent on the speed of rotation, but it's also dependent on the speed of the spinning object is the speed of spinning objects moving through the fluid. Most of the time it's air. If it was spinning but stationary in the fluid, all sides of the object would be subject to this equal pressure. Putting spin on baseballs, tennis balls, ping pong balls, etc. can result in a curved trajectory depending on the direction of the spin relative to the movement through the air. Flutner rotor sails use the Magnus effect to propel ships. There are two theories about Magnus effect you can find on the internet. Pressure difference on two sides of the spinning ball or cylinder through the air calls it deflect from the high pressure side where the ball is turning into the air and retarding it towards the opposite side with lower pressure where the surface of the ball is turning with the direction of air movement. Do Due to Bernoulli's, Bernoulli's theorem, basically fluid pressure decreases at points where the speed of the fluid increases. There's also a Newton's third law theory proposed. Due to, I believe, if my understanding is correct, it's air clinging to the side of the ball, moving with the direction of air, and the spinning ball pushes against the air, causing a force to be exerted on the ball toward that side. Actually, uh, this is just my opinion. Both of the above theories may be involved depending on the speed through the air and the rotational speed of the object. But all you really need to know is that it works and it can be used to impart a curve on a ball or for rotor sails on a ship. This is my way of looking at this. Um, you got a, a spinning ball here moving and it's being deflected into the magnets. Uh, force being put on it. Um, it. The direction of the thrown ball is this way. The Magnus force is that way. It's rotating, in this case, clockwise looking at it. The surface spinning into the wind increases the impact of air molecules resulting in high air pressure. That to me, and to, for myself anyway, intuitively that seems to make sense to me. And the more molecules in a certain amount of volume, the higher the pressure is likely to be. And on the opposite side, where it's spinning this way, you don't really have that effect. So either the pressure is staying about the same or um, possibly even lower. And so if it's higher over here and about the same or lower here, you would think it would deflect it this way. There could be some Newton's third law effects, um, but uh, I like to look at it like this. And uh, at least on this side, you would think that the air molecules can't impart as much momentum in that direction, or pressure, if you will, compared to over here. Okay, let's look at uh, some uh, diagrammatic views of some spinning balls. In this case, viewed from ground level, pretend this would be like a tennis match and someone's putting top spin on a tennis ball going in this direction. With no spin, it's going to go out here. With top spin, because this should be a higher pressure side, it tend to cause it to drop down and drop quicker than it would with no spin. Now, if they do the opposite and put a bottom spin on it, the bottom should be the higher pressure side, 
So it should make it go a little bit further than it normally would with no spin. So with bottom spin, it goes out a little bit further. It stays aloft longer. Now, if you were up, up above looking of, from the top looking down and you put a clockwise spin on a ball and it's going this direction, with the clockwise spin, the higher pressure side should be on this side, making it go in this direction with clockwise spin. With counterclockwise spin, the high pressure side should be on this side going into the wind and make it go in that curve to that direction. Now, no spin, if you could do that, basically straight ahead, not much curve one way or the other. So I hope this helps uh, explain how this works. Most of the time we're talking about throwing curve balls and flattener rotors and so forth. But what if the axis of rotation of the spinning object is parallel to the direction of movement? In this case, surface spinning deflects air molecules such that they cannot impact the surface as easily, resulting in lower air pressure. But in this case, all sides of the spinning object interact exactly the same, so there would not be any net Magnus effect. And with all these spinning balls and cylinders, you do have a boundary layer of air clinging to the surface. But the pressure here should be the same on all sides. A good example of this would be a football thrown with a typical spin around the long axis and traveling, say, point first in the direction of the throw. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the shop and, and do a few experiments and just demonstrate these things. Okay, I'm going to use this, uh, this old art canvas here. You'll notice if I pull it away from this balloon, just an air-filled balloon, it uh, causes the balloon to move with it. Now, most of us would expect to see that, but uh, it's uh, not due to suction because there aren't any strings or anything attached to the balloon. We're simply removing some of the air on that side, so the air pressure on the other side um, tends to push it that way. And uh, so now if you, you can push the air into it and cause increased pressure and it moves with it, so just remember, there isn't any real suction. It's just a balance of air pressure one side or the other. We're going to be showing you several different ways to demonstrate the Magnus effect. Uh, one of them is a very large air-filled balloon. We're going to roll all these objects off of a ramp. That causes them to spin uh, clockwise relative to the view you're looking at it and they tend to make it curve back in towards the base of the ladder. So we'll take a look at each of these, see how they do. You can see that large balloon uh, really didn't do a very good job of demonstrating the Magnus effect. It actually was worse than I expected. Okay, now you can see I'm spinning this thing counterclockwise relative to the camera. And you'd get a pretty good Magnus effect looking at it like that. Now what we're gonna do is simply drop it straight down with no spin and you can see what it does. It just goes straight down. Doesn't go in any particular direction. Okay, we're going to roll span of polystyrene, about one and a half inches in diameter, paper towel core, toilet paper core, and just a piece of rolled up uh, paper. And we'll see how these are coming off that ramp. Okay, this is the paper towel core. A little bit of Magnus effect. That one and a half inch diameter solid foam rod or cylinder, a lot of Magnus effect. Just a rolled up piece of uh, paper, quite a bit of Magnus effect. This is the toilet paper core, a little bit of Magnus effect, not much. Now we're going to drop all four of these objects straight down with no spin. Paper top core. Pull out paper core, expand the polystyrene. Okay, roll up paper. This is our experimental apparatus. Got a cordless drill hooked into a uh, reflecting, it's like a fiberglass rod. You can get it from building supplies. And uh, that's, I don't know, maybe 5 16 diameter, not sure. This is just a hand truck. This is just a piece of foam board for a, a background. 
got a few bearings I had here. You could probably get by without them, but should make it a little bit easier to spin. And this is just a foam football from Walmart. Um, the reason for that is I couldn't use an airfield one because I needed to run a rod all the way through it. So anyway, what we're going to do is spin this thing up and then use this shop vac over here on the positive pressure side. And we're going to take the air hose and blow air on one side and the other side and then straight on and show the difference. Now, one thing to keep in mind, the air blowing on it all by itself can deflect it. Oh, we'll Okay, we're spinning, should be spinning clockwise. Spins to make it go up. That's what we would expect. On this side, let's stabilize it. Let's it go down what we would expect. We can stabilize this a little bit. Yeah. Now let's do it straight on. Shouldn't see much of any effect. Any effect is minimal. There is going to be some angle of attack kind of effect, but it's not much. No magnitude effect that I can see. And that's what I would have expected. Using the positive pressure side of a vacuum cleaner or an air compressor are problematic because they're a point source, air tends to diverge, it's very non uniform. So, what I decided to do is use this big pedestal fan that I had to get a more uh, a wider area of a more uniform airflow. It's not really uniform, but better than the uh, vacuum cleaner. So we'll give that a try. All right, let's turn on the fan, then we'll turn on the um, drill to spin that football up. Since it's turning counterclockwise, the football should move up. And you can see that it does. It kind of bounces around, but it definitely goes up. Okay, now we're going to reverse the direction of spin. Now we're turning clockwise. That makes it go down. As we would expect. Now we'll go back to counterclockwise counter again. Now this is counterclockwise, but it should go up probably just a little bit, but it should see something. Yeah, it goes up. It blows in the wind, but it does go up. Okay. Okay, now what we're going to do is blow air directly into one end of that football. Now when we spin it, it really shouldn't do much of anything. There could be a slight aerodynamic effect like angle of attack but we shouldn't see any Magnus effect due to the rotation. Spinning counterclockwise. It really doesn't do anything, just bouncing around. We change the spin direction to clockwise. It really is very little. And it shouldn't. There's no Magnus effect in this orientation. And any other effects are basically the same on all sides. So, and that's what basically what we see other than a little bit of just uh, bouncing and wobbling around. Well, what did we learn? With the Magnus effect, 
the ball turning like this in a crosswind, the ball turning like this, if this is going into the wind, that should give you lift down. It may drop sooner. If it was spinning like that, it would tend to make it go up. Just coming straight, with no, let's say no crosswind, just going straight into the wind, you really don't have that Magnus effect. Like if it was spinning, for example, if it was thrown like this and spinning, that would make it want to curve that way. If it was spinning this way, it would make it want to curve that way. Of course, this is this could be applied to any anything. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please like it and uh, click on the round subscribe button and check out our other links. I'd really appreciate it.